This week, we're going to look at creating a lovable NPC that you can drop into your game, but that is not going to journey with the PCs once they have moved on. Why would we do this? Well, here's why. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and we are looking at adding a lovable PC into the game that's not going to go with the player character. So we're not talking about a long-term interest, we're not talking about a love interest, we're not talking about a mentor or a guide, none of that kind of stuff. We're just talking about lovable NPCs that the party go, oh remember that character, wasn't they, wasn't they nice? Why would we want to add this to our game? Quite simply, it makes your game world feel as if it is alive, as if it's a living, breathing space. It helps enforce and educate your players that not all NPCs they meet are backstabbing, shady, two-faced monsters. It also gives you the opportunity to have a little bit of fun, add some lightness, some humor, some joy into your game, and that is always a good thing. The more we give the players in terms of an emotional space, so the more happiness we give them, the darker the darkness will feel later on in our game. So we're setting ourselves up for a whole bunch of things by adding in just a very nice little NPC for the players to meet. But this is not just a once-off. This is an NPC that will be around should the PCs ever come back. Maybe just to hang out with your really cool NPC. We're going to go through what we are needing for that. And one of the ways in which I keep track of all of that kind of stuff, because that's a question that I get asked a lot of, is how on earth do you keep track of your NPCs and all that kind of stuff? This is it. And I'm going to be using different pieces of software, which I will share with you in the links down below as well as during the video. Right. So when we come to an NPC, the thing that we have to bear in mind is that a lovable NPC is someone who needs to be able to help the party in a selfless kind of way, but not at the sacrifice of themselves. They must still be a real character. So we need to bear that in mind. Furthermore, we need to bear in mind that very lovable characters, the player characters, the PCs, might actually try and encourage them to join them, to sign up with them, to participate in ongoing adventures and things. They need to have a reason to not join. And not just a reason of, oh, well, the pay is very good, because the PCs will obviously offer more if they really like your, your NPC. So they need to have things like, oh, my whole family is here. I couldn't possibly leave them. But you know what? If you ever come back, you'll be welcome at my hearth. So let's dive into how do we make this NPC. This is Goblin World Tracker that we have put together. And I've been working in this little town of Edaheim. I will see that I've already dropped in an NPC here which uh, I'm going to just click on and you're going to see the information there. Now, this is a lad. This is a lad. This is an NPC that I made up on the fly, but that my players fell in love with. They absolutely adored a lad. Some groups, other groups have breezed past a lad because I do generally create a lot of NPCs in my games that I just use over and over and over again. And it's really important. Now, those of you that are watching what's written on the screen, you'll see that I have got Ogas. Occupation, goal, attitude, and stake, CPLQ, which doesn't translate very nicely into an acronym, but I've also got that added in. So very, very briefly, I will go through those. Oh, gas, they've got to have an occupation. A lad's a case, his occupation is he's a town guard. He's a town guard. He guards the town. So far, he's never once lost it because it stays exactly where it is, which does make the guarding a lot easier. And he does wonder why he gets paid to guard the town because the guard of the town is really not that not that quick. It doesn't hide very much. It certainly doesn't seem to go anywhere. We've got his goal. What is his goal? To help people and meet a goblin princess. I always like to give goals to my NPCs. Most of them should be mundane, but we are creating a likable NPC. And you go, well, why do you want to meet a goblin princess, a lad? Oh, well, I would always like to meet nobility. And I quite like goblins. I think they're quite cute in their own way. By giving your likable NPCs slightly curious goals. Oh, I want to build a model ship, only it's at a one-to-one -one scale. That's not really a model ship then, is it? I mean, they don't have to be ridiculous examples like that either. It could be, I'm trying to catalogue every single plant in the nearby forest. Uh, I have an absolute fixation with different leaves. Look at this one, it's variegated, whereas this one is actually serrated on the edges. And then they're from the same species. How fascinating. Giving these little extra bits and bobs, little goals that are out of the ordinary, will make them stand out to your PCs. 
You don't have to be super creative either. It can just be, oh, I'm just trying to climb every uh, temple tower that I come across. I've climbed 57 so far and I've only fallen off of 12. So that's the goal. How uh, the A is their attitude. What is his attitude? A lad's attitude is dedicated. He will do anything unless it prevents him from being a town guard, helping people, or meeting a goblin princess. If those are on the cards, he will do anything to make sure those are happening. So a lad is not going to abandon his post. A lad is not going to volunteer to go off. Oh, no, I can't leave. I've been hired to look after this here town. What if it were to run off one night and everyone would wake up and say, oh my. Anyway, so whatever we do there, that's that's what a lad is going to have in terms of his uh, attitude. And then his stake. How dedicated is he? I've written their medium. I think I'm going to actually change that to high. And this is another very valuable point. Nothing is set in stone until the PCs interact with a lad. Uh, right, CPL. What is their competency? What is their proactivity? And what is their likability? His his competencies too. As a guard, people can sneak past him. People can move around him because he's not guarding people. He's guarding the town. So unless someone tries to steal a building, they're pretty likely to get away with crimes happening in front of him. His proactivity, he will. He is very proactive. So once he meets the party and he learns that the party is trying to do something in town, he will try and help them at as almost all costs, except forsaking his original goal and his duty. Likeability, he's nice. He's never going to complain. He's never going to moan. He's never going to... to ask the party for favors or things along those lines. I've just put in those numbers one through five for my own personal value. You can put in whatever values you like. These come from Brandon Sanderson, by the way. He gave a talk on, on writing and creativity and that sort of thing. And so by putting this in, I now have a pretty good picture of a lad. And then I've got his quirk, which is he is incredibly literal and he's not very bright at all, which is absolutely fine because he doesn't need to be. So he's going to help the party. Now, there are some other notes that I will add in here as well. And these notes, generally speaking, I will add in during the game or after the game once I've kind of fixated on something. And this one is my biggest one, so I usually put it at the top. And that is accent. For me, I love doing accents. It's all I... Not all I do, but it is one of the things that I do is I like to do accent. For a lad, maybe he's youthful. So it might be a plucky young fellow. I'd really love to help you, but I'm not entirely sure I can. You see, well, the elvish walls, someone's been stealing them. Now, we know from last week's video about this village having elvish walls that were slowly being stolen and used and repurposed and that sort of thing. So that's part of how you build your NPC is you remember the environment that they're in. Remember the location that they're in. Think how they would think if they were in that actual town itself. So I will come up with an accent and let's say youthful, plucky lad. What I have also done, because I find that this helps greatly, not only for myself, but for my players as well, is in this case, I have also generated an image of young Alad there, looking very um, perky, I guess you could say. There he is standing outside of one of those gates that are slowly being torn apart. This was generated by Artflow.ai, the uh, AI generator. This I can now use and say, well, he's a fairly well-built, muscular young man with neatly combed red hair, shiny breastplate, but uh, parts of it have been cobbled together from what looks to be copper or brass. And he stands glaring at the city walls, daring them to move. So this is all of the stuff that I like to add in when it comes to my NPCs. And I don't need their stats necessarily because they're not ever going to fight. And if they do get into a fight, by keeping their stats in reserve, I can then use a stat block that I need. So if my party decide they're going to go off to a tavern and they're going to go and do their own thing, and then they get into a fight, a lad might arrive. And if the party are doing really well in the fight, the lad is not going to shine. He's not going to take any glory away from the PCs. He is going to just get in there and help and assist because we want him to be likable. At the same time, if one of the PCs has snuck out to go and do whatever it is that they're going to do, you know what PCs are like. If one of them has snuck out and they end up in trouble, well, now I can add a lad back into my game and I could give him a much bigger stat block so that he's actually, he's not very really good at guarding, but hitting things is really simple. You take this here spear and you stick it in them and then they stop trying to do whatever they're trying to do. Did I do it right? Yes, a lad, he's not moving. Well, then I shall arrest him for that is something that I should do. And then I will take him to the jail and to the sheriff. So you try and ingratiate themselves. You try and make them look as nice as possible. And one of the techniques that I like to use, and I don't want to go on for too long, 
But one of the things that I like to do is I like to establish the first meeting with the NPC and the PCs. I might decide, okay, right, the, the PCs are looking for some information. So here's a lovable NPC who's not going to give them much information, but might give them a direction to go in. So they come across a lad because he's a town god. He will give them information to go somewhere else. So we have the initial encounter. And in the initial encounter, the NPC, a, a likable NPC, should be as open and as honest with the players as possible. We have a second encounter with that NPC. This is more in a social kind of context or perhaps in a more relaxed environment. Could be in any kind of situation. But the NPC once again demonstrates that they are there to help the PCs and not to hinder them. And then finally, when the PCs are leaving, it's just a lovely little touch. You don't have to do it for all of them, and you shouldn't have villages populated with lovable NPCs, by the way. You should have one lovable NPC for every 50 or 60 of the others. This is not a game of, look at all of the lovable PCs, uh, NPCs that are out there. No, 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 no. This is about you peppering them all over the place randomly, so that your players get used to the idea that some NPCs are just nice people. So the last little... The little twist that I like to give them at the very end is that as the party are leaving, a lad comes pounding up to them and says, Oh, I'm so glad that I, I caught you before you left. Molly from the tavern told me that you'd paid your bill and that you were obviously heading on, which is brilliant. So what I would like to suggest is I noticed that you didn't have any rope with you, only your adventurers. So I've got you some rope as a farewell gift to say just thank you for talking to me because not a lot of people do. Anyway, safe adventures. The party will weep with joy or glee or just cold-heartedly take the rope and sell it to the next town, whatever the case might be. It's a token. It's a trifle. It could be, especially if you have used the town, as we spoke about in last week's video, if you used it to give them information. This now, the lovable NPC might be able to reinforce that information. If you feel that the party haven't yet grasped exactly what's going on or are not yet on the right page, I could have a lad come running up going, oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, but um, I, I couldn't overhear that you were talking about the purple cloaks. Um... Well, to be quite frank with you, my dad's got a purple cloak. Very odd coloured kind of cloak and he never wears it. Well, except for last week when he put the cloak on and he said he was going to, to Sparvin. Um, where was it now? Oh yes, to the, 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 the Rattlesnake Tavern. Just a little bit of extra information, a little bit of an extra drive and the PCs might go, um, Alad, what's your dad like? Well, he's, he's hairy. Alad, what does your father do for a living? Oh, <sighs> Well, according to my mother, he's a nun because he does none or nothing. I don't know, Ed. I get confused. You're not going to give the PCs every single answer that they're looking for, but you have given them enough that this purple cloak is now to be found in uh, the Rattlesnake Tavern in Sparvin. You've helped solidify, you've helped concrete, and the PC then, the NPC, I should say, remains behind waving cheerily by, and off the PCs go. So lovable NPCs are really easy to drop into your game. Not very often, but they are good to drop in there for a very brief reason. They give the player party uh, information, they can guide the player party, they create a sense that your world is not populated only by evil or nasty or malicious uh, beings and entities. Of course, they add color to your world, making it feel as if it's alive. Now, if you're asking the question, why shouldn't they go with the party? Why shouldn't we add them to the party? You might not need them to. You might already have a whole bunch of NPCs that are already helping the party. Um, followers, guides, mentors, supporters, and that sort of thing. Maybe you don't want any more NPCs. But also, it is just good practice to have some nice people in your world. It will make the evil people in your world seem even more evil. A massive thank you to my wonderful patrons, a huge thank you to you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and of course, as always, much love to our amazing editing goblin who puts these videos together. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of lovable NPC making.